Motion we accept. Motion by Commissioner Brown is second. Commissioner Reed, all in favor? No. All opposed? We look on the next page here. You see we had 27 new residential accounts and 60 business accounts. We closed out 42 residential accounts and two business accounts. So we went back with if he's moving out, there may be many people left. I know it. It's probably going to affect the census, isn't it? No, it's not. It's not going to go out of the phone anyway. Probably the one of the three of them didn't move to start with. Any old business we need to bring up? I guess that would be the time. We're going to talk about the industrial. Yeah, uh, I, I sent a letter to the, to the authority requesting that uh, uh, <coughs> the commercial industrial uh, franchise, close franchise, and we just request that the authority do that. Uh, as y'all are aware, uh, Mr. Bailey and I went to see BASF and just to uh, talk with them and uh, at that time, they were pretty adamant about staying with the company that they were using at that time. But since this is an exclusive franchise and everybody else pretty much complies with it, that we thought that, you know, we've been about a year and a half into, over a year and a half into the contract, so I think that we've been more than patient about, about this. And, and uh, we would just like to, be, you know, for the authority to enforce the, the franchise agreement. So that's. That's the purpose of the letter. Yeah. I think I'm going to go to a couple of letters to get people to ask me. All right. Well, we, uh, I have not been back down there since you and I went. We talked in and had any conversation, conversation with them at all. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, you want? Sure. Um, Commissioner, Chairman Bailey. Uh, yeah, called me a, a month or so ago in, in regard to this letter. And just to ask me what the authority's um, obligation was in this regard. And I said, when I, when I looked at the language, I couldn't recall that exact language being in the, the agreement. There was similar language in the agreement. And if, and I'm open to if, if the language is there. And the, and the difference between the language of what was in the advertisement and what was in the RFP 
is that the RFP, as I remember in our discussion, was also centered around the commercial and residential waste in the county, and specifically not the industrial waste. That the industrial waste was discussed, or was discussed during the pre-proposal conference. And in as much the discussion was the county or the authority at that time doesn't control, and hasn't been able to control the industrial waste, but the county or the authority, I'm sorry, would work with the contractor and try to get, help the contractor secure those industrial waste accounts that the contractor shouldn't currently have. But that wasn't going to be an obligation or a guarantee, but certainly would be something the authority would try to do on a, make a good faith effort to do. So, and I just, but what I do want to be sure, and I'm not sure if this, well, from what I can tell, it's not a contractual obligation. I don't see it as a contractual obligation. I'm not an attorney, just a garbage man, a consultant. But, and I just, and if the allied sees that as a contractual obligation, then we just need to be aware of it and act accordingly. So, but other than that, I do, I do recall the authority, we all said we would try to work with the contractor and secure those accounts to the best ability of the authority, but there's no guarantee. So. Good afternoon. I'd like to just reiterate a couple of sections from the RFP, which by the RFP is incorporated into the follow-on contract. Under the advertisement, it says that the contractor shall be the sole and exclusive, as permitted by law, collector of acceptable waste from residential and commercial units located in Washington County, Alabama. That's reiterated again in the instructions to the proposal, page five. And now, this kind of goes through a maze to get where we're, where we're coming from. And I would like to say that we're not talking about hazardous waste, okay? We're only talking about what's called non-hazardous or in your proposal or your RFP, acceptable and unacceptable waste. So a commercial unit, because we were talking about residential and commercial, a commercial unit is defined as any commercial, governmental, industrial, or institutional establishment in all other buildings or premises other than residential units located within the county. And then it goes on to define a residential unit. Commercial waste shall mean any and all acceptable waste generated by a commercial unit and specifically excludes unacceptable waste as defined herein. And when you further get to the definitions, unacceptable waste on page 16 means such hazardous, infectious, liquid, medical waste, motor oil, batteries, gasoline, paint, rubber gloves, or other solid or liquid waste specifically prohibited for disposal at a state approved disposal facility by ADEM or any other regulatory agency having jurisdiction over such landfill in accordance with applicable law. So as you move down a hierarchy, if you will, we're definitely not talking about an industrial application that would be categorized as hazardous waste. It is what we're concerned with as a commercial site per the definition of a commercial site and the associated commercial garbage connected with that definition. Can you read the definition of commercial again? Yes, sir. A commercial 